So this uh, field level testing of ISR quality, uh, this title uh, for me was very difficult to make the presentation. Initially, I was confused. Uh, what is this testing? Today's testing, uh, you know, I cannot comment much because for certification, what testings happen? They are mostly at the uh, level of a chemist or some kind of person who is deep into lab kind of work. Only they can do. But for me, how my journey went into this kind of testing of myself when I started a lead by a sir. So those things are incorporated. Next. So here this uh, science and technology, especially scientists should demystify knowledge and technology for the benefit of society. This is the thing which is always there for me, even for me as a scientist. Because this communication is very much required when you are working with master. Next. Yeah, there are various types of biochars. Uh, in the morning also I was discussing here. Biochar, biochar. Yes, there are types of biochar, so we are calling biochar. So, so because based on feed stock and production technologies, definitely there will be some differences. Next. So we have different types of feedstocks uh, as already in the earlier presentation it was discussed the potential large center. Uh, forestry I also don't uh, recommend but I uh, had a challenge like uh, pine trees in the North India. It's a typical problem forest fire accumulation and uh, they are unable to manage that and forest fires have become so common. So there the government itself, the forest department itself wanted people to take this uh, residue forest biomass and do something. They are putting incentives for the community. So that's why I have to talk. So uh, not only that, we have captive forest, uh, like forest corporations. Uh, there are lots of forests. So they are specially growing forests for the uh, industrial requirements like that. So they are also having lots of residue. So rice husk is a very big thing. So like this we have many things. Next. So here the biggest confusion I think uh, many times in groups I see is uh, so many intellectuals are there but fundamentals they are missing. Always they sometimes say soil organic carbon, sometimes they say biocide. You have to improve the soil organic carbon, it is very poor, so let us put biocide. So everything has its own value. Even if I have diamonds, I cannot make it like biocide value. The value of biocide is different for soil. Diamond has nothing to do for the soil. It is good for air or some other industrial application. So like that. So any of this FAO, they have different protocol and testing methods and uh, Valkyrie Black method, this is FAO, it clearly says, okay, it says that the soil organic matter refers to all decomposed, partly decomposed and undecomposed organic matter. You have pushed up? So like that. Then again, uh, we have here IPCC. Why I am taking the standards of IPCC is uh, to put aside IDI or uh, European certification, all that. Uh, but uh, IPCC at least we have to follow because it uh, tells about all countries, nearly 200 countries. So the summary. So they are telling converting waste plant material into a charcoal like substance called biochar. People may not agree, charcoal, biochar. See, when we were working in 2005, there was no jargon for biochar. You can see the bioenergy list group also. From 2007, slowly in Google Trends, you can find out uh, the term biochar is being used, popularly. So, otherwise, it had its own name, some name is there, no, the name is charcoal, traditionally. It's okay. So, called biochar and uh, burying it in the soil can also be used to store carbon away from the atmosphere for decades to centuries. That's what IPCC report says about biochar. Next. So, 
So by a sir culture, this term I have coined because I want to bring multiple applications, uh, not only soil. Let us say I used the biochar in my biochar fix. I was one of the first person to experiment. I have a house constructed with biochar fix. Why? Because if I demolish my house, or after 30 years, 50 years, or 100 years, this biochar would go back to the environment. So it should benefit, no? Finally. So, we can use multiple ways. Why you want to use directly biochar to the soil? There are empty different ways like filtration media you can use. So your filtering water or your RO water filters are very nice activated carbon. Use it. You don't throw that filter, just cut it. You will find nice crystalline biochar. Use it. Like that you will have multiple uses. So at least it might have served one year, then again you are serving the soil, like that. So here, uh, especially traditional local practices should be encouraged. Uh, I think uh, GSZ is doing good thing with uh, involving lots of communities. Uh, with locally available raw materials uh, and that makes it sustainable, actually. Next. Because I have a reason already in one of my earlier scientists explained, because uh, the transportation of raw material to a centralized point for industrial scale production is always challenging. Remember that. It is not so convenient. So that's why decentralized options would be useful. This is my argument. So this is Weber's uh, theory, really for theory that tells. So nobody will refine gold at, uh, in a city. They are refined only at the mine because they have to so much of weight. That's the cost. So cost of testing biochar is high. This is the simplest statement I am making. And telling if you perform all the tests for one unit of your biochar, it will be lax. For as a um, university or institute or research, it is perfect. Because they want to characterize and they want to go and understand. But when we are producing in batches and batches and batches, and if you want to test and know what it is like uh, every batch, it is not so easy. That's why we need to have some simple thumb rules to understand the quality of the biochar. Next. So here you can see in uh, 2005 when I was explaining the farmers uh, the biochar for the first time. That's in those days uh, I called charcoal because there was no term. And I was telling them in simple terms, see in the morning you brush your teeth, it has some value. You wash your plates, while cleaning also use some charcoal. So like that I was adding on so many things. So and I also showing with water, see if I put charcoal here in this water, that's what I am telling. It will float initially because when it is fresh, it will not it is hydrophobic, then over a period it will just come down. So with simple language I was explaining farmers to gain their confidence to work in their field. That too the more challenging thing I have taken, that is to work on alkaline soils. Nobody would dare. Acidic soils, perfect biochar, you put any biochar, you will be happy. So that way, but again other properties like uh, many things which are visible, so it is black, yes, my answer is black. The shiny reflective surface uh, reduces uh, sometimes, uh, uh, because uh, if it is shining and crystalline, it is reflecting, you may not see so much darkness when you are seeing it physically. Okay, sometimes it appears like greyish black, but actually you cut open and see again it is very dark and black, like this. But of course, ash and other impurities, if it has like rice as biochar, sometimes it will have lots of ash even at the place of production. You cannot separate ash and rice at that moment. So when you see it appears a little bit different color, like that. So amorphous to crystalline, these jargons may not be 100% accepted, but this is common jargon I am telling to explain to people. So shiny and uh, uh, then uh, lightweight, that everybody can guess. Almost the shape of that wood will be similar, 
even biaser when it is converted, but only difference of the root piece and this biaser is it is lighter, that everybody can see. So the low bulk density because of poor structure and the surface area, it is crushable, yes anybody can use their hands or a little bit strength to crush biaser, to set, say that it is. Taste, how many of you taste biaser any time? Yeah, very good. That's what nothing, morning you wake up and put some charcoal and you might have pressed your teeth somewhere, it means you have tasted already, okay. So it has like a, a little bit smoky and uh, like that, kind of smell sometimes. And uh, uh, when the chewed it is crispy, that much you know, I think, because you have to chew to brush. Then uh, sharp edges of the freshly powdered by HR, that has some advantages also, because it is so sharp. Okay, later on it might be rounded eh, in the process. Then the powdered biochar touched by it is easy to wash with water. I was discussing with these charcoal producers. They said uh, after a whole day work in the evening when they take bath, they don't even require soap. They are so fresh because the, everywhere the charcoal dust will be there. And just they put water and they are fresh. You know the value, why it's like this. Then odorless, sometimes a little bit smoky smell. And the floating test, that's what I said. Any biochar, wherever you buy, just put it in water just to see whether it is matured or not. It should settle down slowly. If everything is floating, it means it is not good or it is like woody or it is not converted into complete biochar. Some impurities we don't know. So that way you can always test. So water holding capacity and filtration, there are some simple things I show by pictures, so then you will see. Next. So results are uh, important. See, this is ultimate. Because in agriculture, it's a very complex thing. The agro economy is very big thing and very challenging. And to make it sustainable, one biochar thing, why farmer will think so much ultimately he wants the result. What is the result? His production. That is ultimate for him. So that's why I always say biochar is not the end result. It's part of the process. And that process is not a one day thing. It's like goes into years together. And we don't see the biochar applied today has its value different. The biochar which is in the soil for about 100 years, it is different. Definitely, it is not the same. So there will be so many changes happening. So that's why, uh, then after application, because there are so many other things like moisture retention, microbial thing, or how much they are absorbing the pesticides and the chemicals, chemical fertilizers, the residue fertilizers, and how much they are releasing back and uh, the fungi and like that many things are there uh, all these things are the integral part of understanding the biochar next yeah this is one of the field uh, trials i always say people whatever biochar wherever they have purchased the simplest thing they call me and tell how much i should apply i say uh, what are you talking i don't know your soil i don't know your climate I don't know from where you are and you are, I don't know what crop you will go for. Nothing, you are just asking me how much I should apply. So I said uh, that's not the right way. You can do one simple experiment that is have this kind of plots. And uh, one is control soil, he thought uh, whatever it is naturally leave it as it is. And then the soil plus uh, biochar, add biochar in different, uh, take uh, one square meter plots, let us say, or multiple you can take if you want a bigger area. So one square meter, because to calculate for one hectare, it will be easy for you. So one square meter plot you take, then apply one kg here, another one square meter plot you take, two kg here, another one square meter, three kg there. Okay, so that is one way. Again, I am telling other amendments will be there. Let us say if it is alkaline soil, then somebody will say apply some gypsum. So what quantity they are recommending, they are apply. Somebody has recommended farmhead manure. So what quantity they have recommended, that much you apply. Otherwise you want to do. So amendments 
without amendment of the issued have occurred with amendment of the issued have occurred. without by a sir only amendment you have another plot that is also important you should know what is working many people say my soil is perfect then i say why do you apply if it is perfect don't apply if you are fair enough so you don't apply fair and lovely no so so i always suggest people so like that so then control soil is there control is naturally whatever it is okay next so this is my test plot these are like around 2008 sometime uh, some of the simple trial plots you can see these are not 1 square meter they are more than that eh? that's why the quantity i applied the control is everything is close by this is the easiest way because you see between 8 kg and 12 kg 8 kg thing is working well why i should appear more apply more got it the thumb rule you got you for your soil you got a thumb rule you keep it as family secret because for hundreds of years your generations will apply this like coca cola okay they'll be happy because for your environment for your place this is perfect next see you can see 1.5 feet to 6 feet okra okay. record growth ahead they say always wonder records don't happen in agriculture university they happen in kitchen garden because kitchen gardens always had this kind of source that's why it is happening next these are my plots sometimes people thought i am an athlete <laughs> because i had red flag i am occupying some land it's okay because in the same field everything is control this is by a sir plot okay just to demarcate four flags small flags so that i can count what i count is flowers leaves height girth fundamental things that will give me total story what is happening okay that is the easiest method go with vegetable within 3 months you will have your ticket how much of life Yeah, this is by a chart. This is control. In the same field, I said that you go with your pesticide, your chemical, everything you go normally. What you want to do? Only apply here by a chart. Let us see. So I worked with uh, at least hundreds of farmers like this in between uh, 2009, 10, 11, 12, like that. Okay, because confidence of farmer is important. Reaching, teaching has no value. Practical showing is important. Next, see my farmers are applying. Even for the paddy, they are already being cultivated. They are applying, or even the dry fields, rain fed fields also they are applying. Okay, next. And this is one of my first around two thousand five six. Uh, when I have done my experiments in alkaline farming, because these fields were left fallow, you can see the satellite imagery of those days. I can give location. Google Maps have come by the time around. So it is like white color alkaline field left fallow. Then I have guided them. It's an amendment. Not only by nature, I have incorporated a few other things into it. Then we got the crop. Yeah, cotton and this is paddy. What is rain fed? One is irrigated. Perfect. For most are happy. Next. So testing by answer after application is also important. We have norms uh, to test the product for selling. They are being established now. Most of the work that is happening by IBA or many standards even. This uh, carbon uh, credits and all that uh, that's happening intensely. That's happening. That is mostly for the industrial scale production unit. That is perfect. But actually, ultimately, what we should is that is the methane emission. You can see a bubble. What will happen when I apply my fertilizer into this one? How much rain emission will come down? Because greenhouse gas emission from agriculture is 
one of the biggest thing for India as of now. We don't comment because food is important. So it's okay. Next. See, these are the very visible, uh, perfect things. Rhizobium. You can see the farmers have never seen like that. Nodule. And here you see other plants, the roots. How uh, we can see the plant always reflected by the roots. Yeah, next. So one of my testing is that watching and knowing uh, what is the change that happened in the soil. Because in alkaline soils, if you have walked earlier, it will be slippery. You should fall down. So after the application, I was walking in the same field. I felt the difference between the field where I have not applied and where I have applied. I have not fallen down at least in that field. Yeah. So change has happened. And temperature. Simple, nowadays you get digital uh, thermometers of 150 rupees, 200 rupees. Keep it with you always. Any biochar that you purchase, just put it and see. Around 37 degrees like that, uh, if it is there, it's fine. Because that is what our body temperature and that's where anything for food. Okay, but higher temperature means there is no life. Even if they have inoculated, everything died, something like that. Okay. So here, uh, soil cracks we can observe in the soil after application. Then count the perfumes. Termites, I went to Nalamalai forest. There I have established my termite research. Because we have many varieties of termites existing in Nalamalai forest. Because it is dry deciduous forest. And there in one of the Chinchu powders which is abundant, I have taken biochar and I have put up. Want to see? There the repulsion was there. I was very happy because the termites is a big issue even for horticulture. Yeah, for many plants they live also they attack. So initially repulsion will be there, later on okay. They accept because their body is so thin, they get dehydrated and die and they get peace. That's the problem. And also, I gave to one of the person who met me, this biochar. He kept it home. He did not tell his wife what is there. But suddenly one day he called me and said, Sir, some miracle happened. What happened? My uh, wife used this for repairing the ants. And they moved away. She is happy. I said, perfect. We have not used any other chemical. It is repulsion is better than killing. Okay, so that way it worked out. Then uh, biochar mulch impacts on weeds. Okay, this uh, uh, mulch means biochar itself can be used around the plants as a mulch. That's perfect because too much if you have biochar, nothing grows. You might have seen wherever charcoal production has happened, nothing grows almost all. So that much is good because it will regulate the temperature, because it is insulated capacity, it is porous now, and it has soil moisture retention capacity, it has repulsive capacity. So, so many values are getting added, not only into the soil but around also will help you. Then pH of the soil, you know all these things. How it will regulate over a period, normalize pH, which is convenient for any life to exist. Yeah, next. That, uh, yeah. That terra preta and ant, you can see that bioenergy list is one of the oldest storm miles is managing. You all might have got uh, to that uh, blog and uh, earlier literature. So in 2007 only I posted. So earlier our discussions were like this. For that reason I posted. Our jargon was terra preta. <laughs> then ants I have posted. Even those discussions were very intense because for me I was not knowing whether I am going in the right direction or no. But by sharing, definitely I got benefited that international community wherever they are. So they have been commenting. Or, yeah. Next. So again, uh, simplest germination experiment, the same tray. Then I have used different seeds. You see this uh, right side is biochar, that side is soil. You can see how, what is the difference happened. Visible, directly. 
I always say even any person who is selling biochar should provide a tray with seeds and give it to a farmer. Let him know. Not taking the product and dumping and after one year complaining. Because within 10 days the farmer will know whether that biochar will work for him or not. Any vegetable seed you put that fine. This is confidence level. Always I worked on stoves. More than 50 stoves I have designed, facilitated. Always said community. If you like it, pay. If you don't like it, return the stock. See, we are mystifying the fundamentals. The agriculture is the oldest occupation. So somewhere we have to bring back this confidence to the community. Again, you see it adopted a urine experiment. I done with my kids urine because they will not have any antibiotics or anything like that. So after 10 days collecting, I just put in uh, some biochar and put in the toilet, requested my kids to do every day. So after collecting, you can see that is darker, how much nitrogen it is passing, that kind of experiments. So these are the very rooftop experiments I used to call because I was not having much laboratory. So over our rooftop, I started my research. Next. The second one is uh, the biochar, sir. This is biochar, so no, this part is biochar. PP urine, PP urine. The second one is biochar. Yeah, yeah. I used uh, bio, biochar with urine. In other words. Biochar with urine. Yeah. Yeah. Not pouring urine. Yeah, yeah. I kept in the toilet. Yeah. Just uh, my kids had been doing. Then after 10 days, I collected. After it. Next. Next. Yeah, again, uh, how much water it will retain and what it will do, the filtration kind of things. These are my simple hat and saucers because we can see the reflective white color in the background. Then, uh, how much water is coming out of that pot after putting equal quantity. Then I could know that, yes, definitely the biochar is absorbing water, retaining water, and it is leaving very little water. Even if it leaves water, it is good water. Because in irrigation, the problem is we are giving bad water to plants. Even if you all drink bad water, our health will go. If we give so much polluted water to our this, in biochar presence, definitely the soil will have good quality of water, which is taken by the plants. Next. Uh, that left one, back you go. So that was uh, really two or foot, you see cluster B, record. If I continue this experiment, the uh, Guinness World Record will be with me only. So something like biochar I am telling. Next. So this is my one of the fundamental formulas which I adopted and the uh, geochar I used to call. And uh, jaggery, some compost, uh, some soil micros means taken from any place which is not touched, polluted, take some soil. Or you can apply trichoderma very day like this, many other things are there. And green mulch and then biochar, mix it. Like simple formula I used to make, 15 days, just sprinkle, then apply. This is the fundamental formula. Next. So that's what my telling my farmers and uh, we have done. Next. And also this experiments have done, uh, wherever the cattle sheds are there, uh, wherever the slurry goes and just, it just left actually. So at the end point, put some biochar, dump it, just take it and use it. Fine. Next. And blends, there are unclean blends, there is so much confusion. I have already put up all the blends, possible blends on this earth. Okay, you say seagrass too, so on a rock dust to you name anything, seed, anything, all compositions are there, you experiment say, say anything with biochar, it will work. Okay? You'll have your own brand. No problem. It will work. So that way you can use this template if you want. Next. So the difference is uh, high in less fertile and degraded soils, uh, especially where we should apply biochar and these are the statements. Huh? And uh, biochar is good for all types of soils because the fertility of the different time and space varies based on human and natural conditions. So 
So one kg to three kgs uh, for every square meter. This is a kind of thumb rule. Okay, don't worry because uh, when you are going for plantation, it is point application. You can apply more also because your fit will be bigger, like mango or cup if you are growing. So you can vary that component because either it is point, line, or spread. Three kinds of application. So you can always look at that and. Uh, uh, compost and other nutrients should be added uh, because uh, done regularly to any field. Many people think this is a fertilizer. No, you have to add those regular things continuously. Okay. Then initially the nitrogen should be added more. That we all know because it has more affinity towards nitrogen. So let it have some happy. Let it be happy with having some additional nitrogen so that it will not impact our existing nitrogen. Next. So effect of biochar, you know all these things from research what it does. These are something uh, like which you cannot see uh, practically, but in when we do lab testing and in a proper form, then all these things will be uh, are known from that. Next. So these are the existing uh, testing methods adopted by biochar production industries. I am calling industries because the scale is like that. It's not a small thing, carbon credit. Now we have India green credit and the carbon credit markets of Indian. The, there actually we all, somebody should from this group should be in their scheme and they are making these guidelines. Only recently they have started the government of India. Because we have uh, this NDCs, uh, we have to acknowledge that this much emission reduction we are doing globally. So, you have to account. So, government of India doesn't want our credits to be given to some other country. So, we want all the credits to be here. For that reason, these markets are coming. Otherwise, you will get uh, nicely $200 like that. Uh, you have different uh, market prices existing. So, all these things could be, that's why, as Sarah said, uh, let us not. Uh, go by the credit uh, incentives, but let us go by the real demand and uh, real need, uh, like that. So, uh, of course, uh, approximate analysis, I like it because at least you know that fixed carbon. That fixed carbon and total carbon, these are very, very important. And we need more laboratories I'm telling, and which are uh, cost-effective laboratories. That's why I have a program with school children now. I'm starting soil testing laboratory in the school, water quality testing laboratory in the school. Even biodiversity mapping, everything should be done by children. There is nothing wrong. They are studying. So this, uh, then pH and electrical conductivity, then cation exchange capacity. So these are the basic things that are happening now. That is a different certification of process. Huh? Surface area and porosity analysis, heavy metal and contaminant analysis. Next. Sir, uh, existing soil testing laboratories can do this? No, no, no. Uh, see, scanning electron microscope, even to purchase, it is goes into lakhs and crores of rupees. One. So, if you want to know exactly the picture of your biochar, XID is different. So, each will have different costs. They will do basic analysis, so that is different. Right? Uh, but uh, this I think standards, uh, many things, even microbial activity, that requires another kind of laboratory, uh, like this, many are there. So that's why it is going beyond our uh, ordinary this thing. Even understanding also is very difficult. Next. So water holding capacity, something small things we can do. Any of this uh, uh, plant growth trials, that is what we can do, the simplest, that's what I'm telling and germination uh, things we can do and uh, uh, this uh, water content and other things we can do moisture content like this few things we can do even at our level yeah next yeah these are uh, some of my books related to biochar of course uh, this uh, spouse uh, because uh, my spouse are also producing biochar so the biochar producing so gas based spouse are there that's why i put up here Otherwise, the prosopy juniflora is a very big challenge, you know, uh, because it's a external thing, uh, weed uh, plant actually, from Mexico all the way to Kenya. Then stubble budding is a big issue, I have that uh, books. So 
So all these books can be downloaded freely from my website cybasta.com and some videos and podcasts are there you can go through. So always I explain the fundamental things, not much jargon or much uh, depth of kind of thing because I am working as an individual mostly. Yeah, that's why uh, this is our third thing. Thank you very much. Thank you.